Today we're talking about a game that I can't really talk about normally like I would with a regular VR game because this VR game is a visual novel that's essentially been transferred over to PSVR 2 and a couple of other VR platforms that takes you through the life of a painter as you paint various scenes that take you through several events of their life with a story that has a lot of different twists and turns in it that I really didn't expect and kind of hit my emotional core in the same way that A Fisherman's Tale and another Fisherman's Tale did. But I'd say to a further extent with this one because I didn't really see anything of what the game would put on you coming. Right, go. Music check. Okay, now it's Studio ghibli -ing. Hello, other house. This video is only gonna use footage and clips from kind of like the first 40% to half of the game, because after that, it becomes a lot more clear with what the game's trying to say. It's still slightly abstract in this presentation, but I'm just gonna use the first half of the game as footage because I don't wanna spoil anything later on. Uh, and I'm sure you'll understand that if you play the game and you get onto it. And it's out today, by the way. But first of all, let's go through the game as a VR experience, and then I'll talk about why I loved it so much despite some of the issues and hiccups that it does have. As a technical VR experience, Behind the Frame is essentially a mix between Green Hell and a visual novel that you can play in the headset. It takes one of Green Hell's worst features, which is essentially cutscenes play out in a square box in front of you like your normal PS5 menu does when you're selecting your games. With Green Hell, I didn't really like that because it was just a rendered cutscene, but with Behind the Frame, the cutscenes are magically and incredibly and beautifully handcrafted because they're 2D animated. The whole game is very reminiscent of a Studio Ghibli film. I'm a massive fan of that, but this comes out most of all in the handcrafted cutscenes, which, yeah, do play out in a square box like they do in Green Hell, which can be disappointing for some, but Behind the Frame is actually a game that's been ported from the flat screen over to VR. So these cutscenes are the same in both versions, and you're just watching them through the lens of the PSVR 2 in the VR version. After that, it throws you into a 3D recreation of the flat screen's environment that is 2D in the flat screen game, if I remember right. So you go through exactly the same game loops as you do in the flat version, but instead it's you actually walking around this apartment and picking up stuff and doing your daily routine and actually painting, which is really cool. It's kind of a genius idea to bring over a game where you paint into VR and although some people are looking for a sandbox painting game where you can actually paint with different brush styles and create art in VR on PSVR 2, this isn't that. All of the painting you do here is set to what the story wants you to do. You can only paint certain colors in certain areas to create the artwork that is fitting for the game's story. It's not a sandbox painting sim. This is not what that's trying to be. Breakfast, resume. Oh my God, it's resume. Oh my god, I've been pronouncing that resume the entire... I'm so stupid. But yeah, all of the flat screen game systems are done in VR over on the VR version. And for the most part, they work pretty well. There's a few technical hiccups with trying to pick up some objects. And say if you're pouring your coffee, you pick it up, you pour it, and then it plays an animation outside your hands once you've placed it in the correct place. There's some interactions like that which really aren't that immersive. And then there's also interactions which are immersive, like pressing down buttons on a keyboard or pressing down buttons on a padlock box to open it. Ah, oh, that's cool. Stuff like that is really cool and satisfying with good sound design, and I absolutely loved it. But then you've also got the other half, as I mentioned, where some interactions just don't feel very vr -AF, but I don't really expect that from a visual novel port into VR. There were a couple of bugs as well, and a couple of things which I'm not sure if there were bugs or not. Let's get the ones that I knew were bugs out of the way. Sometimes picking up objects would not really work, properly and I'd have to grab round weird edges, say of a piece of bread, I'd have to grab it from the top rather than at the bottom where you'd usually pick up bread. That's just a strange choice, I guess, or placement of where you're supposed to pick up the object. That is the worst as it gets in terms of bugs. And the other one, which I'm not sure is a bug, is that the music would sometimes loop really weirdly. Essentially part of the gameplay loop is you play music, which sets the tone for the chapter of the game that you're in. And sometimes we would transition into another cutscene and the music wouldn't stop playing. Although I think that's on purpose. I think that's meant to be that way because there didn't seem to be any other background music going on, but I just felt it weird that no new music played in the cutscenes. I'm not sure if that was a bug or not. I don't think it was though. Upon reflection right now, I don't think it was, but the music did feel a little jarring at points, but it is really nice, don't get me wrong. It just transitioned into another scene and the music from the last one stayed, which was a bit of a weird choice for me and didn't quite work. With all that nonsensical stuff out of the way, uh, let's talk about visuals as well. In terms of visuals, it's clear this is an indie production 
for the apartment that you spend most of the game in, it looks decent. It doesn't look like anything spectacular for PSVR 2. The resolution is all right. The art style is pretty great, but when it expands out to bigger areas like uh, city squares and stuff like that and outside with trees and other objects like that, the visuals do fall apart a little bit, especially with other player models. However, that's okay. I don't think this game had the biggest of budgets and for what they had to work with, it gets along the narrative fine. And if you don't mind, you know, some subpar visuals at points and you're really in it for the visual novel style story, you probably won't mind that. Although. All you people looking for the best graphics on PSVR 2, this is not it. Nice. <gasps> cat, please let me draw the cat. I gotta draw the cat! Yes. Aww. I've ruined it. It's been unruined. So technically, it's not a complete Marvel or Masterpiece. It's subpar in some areas and pretty good in others. But in terms of what the game's trying to accomplish with story, it's really good. And I'm not sure who to congratulate here, I'm not sure if the same team who worked on the original game have worked on the VR version, but whoever was behind the story and how it's developed, and the plot and the pacing of this game, the music to everything like that needs a massive round of applause because I absolutely love the way this game handled its presentation. Again, it reminded me a bit of A Fisherman's Tale where you transition from different areas, telling the story from different perspectives and giving the player just enough context to keep them going and wanting them to play further and find out more information. And I really can't say anything else about the story in terms of why I liked it because it'll spoil it. The way your character gets recontextualized throughout the story and going to the end and finding out what things actually mean, I mean it's incredibly rewarding and there's not really much else like it on PSVR 2 in terms of that kind of narrative. The game isn't very long though. It can be done in around an hour to an hour and a half I'd say. I don't know exactly how long my playthrough was but I mean you might want to consider how much you're getting for your money. And at the time of recording, I actually don't know what the price of this game will be. It's not out yet. It's not on pre-order. It's just going to come out at a price. If it's around like 10, 15 pounds in the UK here, I'd say that's probably worth it if you're a fan of the genre. It'll give you a good hour or so of compelling and kind of heartbreaking storytelling. But if you're into your high octane action VR games that are very immersive in all fronts and you're not really a fan of slow, visual novels that can take you at your own pace and unravel a story in, this one probably isn't for you. But surprisingly, even though I haven't played too much of the genre before, it was for me. And who knows, if you like the look of the game, maybe it is for you too. If it's cheap, I'd say give it a go if you're interested, but I still don't know the price as I said, so I can't really give a solid recommendation on whether to buy it or not if you're on the fence. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this bit of a different video. Buying the frame is a big change of pace in terms of a VR game uh, that's really emotional, really sad, slightly confusing at points, but in a fairly good way. And one that I recommend to any visual novel fans or people looking for some light puzzling that kind of holds your hand a little bit. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next video.